Now, I'm joined at this moment here uh, in the studio. Uh, Rahul Kaval's taken a bit of a Sunday break and he's back in the studio. That's right, that's what I said. A couple of hours in the afternoon, but he's back now, uh, Rahul. Uh, in Indian politics, unfortunately, they seem to not take their Sundays seriously. You know, and therefore, a, a lot of things happen on Sundays. That's going on, Rajdeep. That's right. But the grandmasters of Indian chess are running circles around the India Alliance. It seems like a ragtag coalition that can't even figure which move to make on the chessboard while they're being outthought, outmaneuvered, outgunned by the Bharatiya Janta Party. The verdict in 2024 was never really in doubt. The question now, Rajdeep, really is, can they beat Rajiv Gandhi's record of 1984? The BJP, uh, sometimes it turns out to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. They're convincing themselves first at the highest levels, then their kharekartas, their booth workers, that this can be done. That, they're, they're thinking big, while uh, the India alliance just seems to be coming away at the seams. Look, I think it is a bit of psychological intimidation when the BJP says mission 400, up ki bar, 400 par. You look at the numbers, they don't really add up at the moment. No, uh, but 300 in Uttar Pradesh was thought impossible. 250 sure. was thought impossible. So I'm saying that's how they're trying to generate belief that we can do this. Sure. Look, it's both ways. They thought they would get 200 in Bengal. They didn't. They fell at 75. Uh, there have been occasions where it's worked, occasions where it hasn't worked. I think the BJP's basic game is there's a pragmatism in their politics. They have decided whatever happens, we have to win 2024 by a big margin to the point where the opposition is thoroughly defeated and demoralized. That's the aim. Even what you're seeing here in Bihar, it's not even for 2025. 2025 is 20 months away. Who knows what happens in Bihar next? But for 2024, they want to safeguard a state where they won 39 out of 40 seats. Now, there were four states that the BJP felt, I think, that they were in trouble in 2024. One was Bihar, one was Maharashtra, one was Karnataka, one was Bengal. These were the four states where there were potential double-digit losses. What have they done? Karnataka tied up with H.D. Kumaraswamy, shored up their Lingayat base, even bringing back Yedurappa, in a sense, through his son as the face of the party once again. Jagdi Shetar is back also in the fold. In Maharashtra, what did they do? First broke the Shiv Sena, then this year, uh, or uh, middle of last year, broke the NCP, thereby strengthening their alliance. What have they done in Bengal? In Bengal, I think somewhere they've tried to ensure that Mamta Banerjee is weakened by the string of cases that she and her, uh, or her ministers certainly face, and thereby uh, sort of strengthening themselves, the alliance between TMC and Congress also not working. And now in Bihar, where Nitish has come back. So the BJP is working to a plan. The India alliance is only reacting and in most cases not even reacting as we've seen with what's really happened in Bihar in the last few days. You're seeing live images of uh, Nitish Kumar's cavalcade heading towards the Raj Bhavan. This is the ninth time that Nitish Kumar will be sworn in. He's done six somersaults. Rajdeep, could this be his last or could there be one or two more? Prashant Kishore <laughs> did a press conference where he says, Six months after the Lok Sabha, like within six months of the Lok Sabha results, Nitish will be back to the RJD fold. Look, we don't know what Nitish Kumar will do. He's also playing his politics election by election. For him, at the moment, 2024, he felt he wanted to be on the winning side. Uh, that's why he's done what he has to. 2024, uh, you know, Patna uh, Durast in a way. So I think Nitish Kumar and the BJP are playing election by election. No, but let's spend a moment, Raj, thinking about the mental makeup of Nitish Kumar. You know, I've both spent a fair amount of time with him. He always wants to come across as a purposeful, sincere, hard-working leader. And yet all these somersaults that he's doing, which would make Nadia Khamenechki look pale in comparison, uh, where does he think he stands? I, you know that he's worried about his political legacy. He's worried about how the people of Bihar and the rest of the country think about him. And yet he's making himself out to be a bit of a political joke. You know, uh, I think Rahul, that's a... I, I, I remember Nitish Kumar from the days when he was Sushasan Babu. When he came taking on Lalu... He Soka. still thinks he's Sushasan yeah, Babu. No, he, you know, when he, when he felt that he was taking... When he was taking on uh, uh, Lalu's so-called Jungle Raj... Look at Nitish Kumar 2005 to I would say around 2012. For seven years, genuinely there's an improvement in law and order. He focuses on roads, on infrastructure. And you go there, Nitish Kumar invokes positive vibes among the Aam Admi of uh, Bihar. Then Narendra Modi in 2013 becomes the BJP's choice for Prime Minister candidate. That's when Nitish's politics changes. Because suddenly he decides to break away from the BJP. And since then, Rahul, I think Nitish has been wandering around... There hoping for a national role, but at the same time conscious of 
uh, sort of dominating power politics in Bihar. You will recall he made Jitin Ram Maji uh, chief minister, but eventually took the chair for himself. So Nitish Kumar, since 2013, has become a much more insecure politician, a politician obsessed with retaining power in Bihar at all costs, where means don't matter, the ends do. I, Sankarshan Thakur, who's a biographer of Nitish, has a lovely line. For Nitish Kumar, it's not a call to conscience. His conscience is on call. <laughs> and I think thereby he's diluted his political equity. But at the same time, because he has a 10-15% vote share, Rahul, both parties, RJD and BJP, have courted him from time to time. And I think he's used that to his advantage, but he's diminished his political legacy in a way to Bihar, which is unfortunate. Because, you know, you thought he was a leader at one stage who could perhaps have national aspirations. That's gone. I think that is chapter is over forever. Whatever else he does from now, no one will take him seriously nationally. He may still be relevant to B.R. Rahul, but nationally he's over. You've seen the 1998 Hollywood rom-com. There's something about Mary. Well, in Bihar, there's something about Nitish. Everybody wants to be on board with Nitish Kumar. Rohit Singh joins us. You're seeing on your screen right now images from inside the Raj Bhavan. Nitish Kumar all suited, booted, coming for his ninth swearing in, ninth swearing in. Rohit, describe the scenes that you're seeing, the BJP camp, they're mighty jubilant. Nitish looks pleased. He's happiest between relationships, never happy being in a relationship when he's just broken up, about to begin his next marriage. That's when Nitish seems happiest.